dear learners, welcome to NIOS studio. Today we will talk about continuous comprehensive evaluation in science and I am Dr. Anjali Bajpayee from Faculty of Education Banara Sindhu University. The background of continuous comprehensive began with the Kothari Commission report in 1966 which stated that the internal assessment or evaluation conducted by schools is of greater significance and should be given increasing importance. It should be comprehensive evaluating all those aspects of students growth that are measured by the external examination and also those personality traits, interest and attitude which cannot be assessed by it. National Policy on Education 1986 had also stated that continuous comprehensive evaluation should incorporate both scholastic and non-scholastic aspects of evaluation spread over the total span of instructional time. Further, the National Curriculum Framework in 2005 also proposed examination reforms in its position paper Aims of Education, NCF 2005 says, school-based CCE system should be established to reduce stress on children, make evaluation comprehensive and regular, provide space for teacher for creative teaching. Then RTE 2009, on 27th August 2009, Government of India adopted the new act that is right to free and compulsory education for children between 16 to 14 years of age. The law came to force for the entire country with effect from 1st April 2010. It states that student up to class 8 should not be made to appear before any board examination from the year 2010 and 11, a scheme of continuous comprehensive evaluation to be implemented from standard 1 to 8. Now this has changed and we are going back to evaluation with examination for class 5th level and class 8th level. But the CCE still is very compulsory for evaluation of student during their teaching learning process. Continuous comprehensive evaluation refers to a system of school-based evaluation of student that covers all aspects of student's development. It is a developmental process of assessment which emphasizes on twofold objective. These objective are continuity of evaluation and assessment of broad-based learning and behavioral outcome on the other hand. In the scheme, the term continuous means that evaluation of identified aspects of student growth and development is a continuous process rather than an event. It is built into total teaching learning process and spread over the entire academic session. It means regularity of assessment, frequency of unit testing, diagnosis of learning gaps, use of corrective measures, retesting and feedback of evidence to the teachers and the students for their self-evaluation. The continuous aspect of continuous comprehensive evaluation takes care of the continual and periodicity aspect of evaluation. Continual means assessment of students in the beginning of instruction, that is the placement evaluation, assessment during the instruction, that is the formative evaluation, and done informally by using multiple techniques of evaluation. Periodicity means assessment of performance done frequently at the end of a unit or a term, that is summative evaluation. The second term comprehensive means that the scheme attempts to cover both the scholastic and the co-scholastic aspects of students growth and development. In order to have continuous comprehensive evaluation, both scholastic and co-scholastic aspects need to be given a due recognition. Scholastic assessment, what are the ways adopted? It is the formative assessment can be in form of projects, quizzes, research work, assignment, conversational skills and oral questions. The summative assessment, the ways adopted in the scholastic assessment are the written end of term examination, multiple choice types, short answer type, long answer type questions and flexible timing. The co-scholastic assessment includes co-scholastic areas like life skills, work education, 
visual and performing arts, attitude and values and co-curricular activities. The course scholastic assessment includes that is life skills include thinking skills, social skills and emotional skills. Those have to be assessed from time to time by observation and repeated involvement with the students. The co-curricular activities in the course scholastic assessment include literally and creative skills, scientific skills, information and communication skills, organizational and leadership skills which are by means of clubs, health and physical education which are by means of various games and sports activities and regular health checkup. The scholastic domain aspects include subject specific areas that is the desirable behavior related to learners knowledge, understanding, application, analysis and creating in subject and ability to apply it in the unfamiliar situation. These are the some objectives of scholastic domain. While when we come to the co-scholastic domain, the desirable behaviors are related to learners life skills, attitude, interest, values, co-curricular activities, physical health which are the part of the co-scholastic domain. The scheme is thus a curricular initiative attending to shift emphasis from testing to holistic learning that is the test should be done to measure the all around development of the student from time to time. It aims at creating good citizens possessing sound health, appropriate skills and desirable qualities beside academic excellence. It is hoped that this will equip the learners to meet the challenges of life with confidence and success. The objectives of continuous comprehensive evaluation are to help develop cognitive, psychomotor and effective skills that is all around development of a learner to lay emphasis on thought processes and de-emphasis on memorization to make evaluation an integral part of teaching learning process, to use evaluation for improvement of students achievement, teaching, learning and regular diagnosis followed by remedial instruction. The purpose of CC is E is also to use evaluation as a quality control device to maintain desirable standard of performance, to determine social utility, desirability and effectiveness of a program and take appropriate actions to take appropriate decisions about the learner, the process of learning and the learning environment. It also helps us to make the process of teaching learning a learner centered activity. Benefits of continuous comprehensive evaluation are it eliminates chance and subjectivity that is since it is continuous we are assessing the learner from time to time it is not based on one day or one examination. It de-emphasizes on memorization, encouragement of comprehensive evaluation covers the scholastic and co-scholastic aspects both of a learner. The continuous evaluation is spread over a total span of instructional time that is it is not one day dependent. The functional and meaningful declaration of results for effectively used by all the results of continuous comprehensive evaluation give us all the aspects of a learner which can be used for his proper assessment. The wider use of test results for improvement through diagnosis and remedial enriching program is also the benefit of CCE. The improvement of mechanisms of conducting examination is also one of the byproducts of continuous comprehensive evaluation. The introduction to desirable change in instructional material and methodology are also a part of continuous comprehensive evaluation and the use of grades in place of marks helps to determine the level of pupils performance and proficiency rather than limiting it to certain numbers. Evaluation is again a process which is both formative and summative. The formative evaluation is the evaluation which takes in the process 
and the summative evaluation is the evaluation which happens at the end of the process. Formative evaluation is thus carried out during the course of instruction providing continuous feedback to both teacher and the learner for taking decisions regarding appropriate modification in transactional procedure and learning activities that is asking student to submit one or two sentence identifying the main points of lecture is a type of formative evaluation. The main features of formative assessment or evaluation are that is it is diagnostic and remedial, it gives feedback, it is a platform for active involvement of student in their own learning, it enables teacher to adjust learning to taking account of results of assessment, it recognizes the profound influence of assessment that is it motivates the students self esteem and they are motivated to do better which is a very important part of a learning activity. Forms of formative evaluation are day to day observation, oral work that is question answer, loud reading, dialogue, conversation, role playing, group discussions, practical and experiments and various activities which can be group activities, individual activities or self studies. Projects, textbooks and tests which are given from time to time homework, class work in form of descriptive essays, report writing, story writing, dialogue, expressing imagination and various other sorts of questionnaire and self evaluation and peer evaluation tools. Instruction for formative evaluation is that use of minimum 5 tools per subject that is for academic subject. For academic subjects we have to use 5 tools and for 3 tools for the subjects that are in the art, work experience or physical education. In other words for scholastic domain we should use at least 4 5 tools and for co-scholastic domains at least we should use 3 tools. The usage of tools should be spread throughout the semester, it should not be done at one time and the selection and weightage of each tool should depend upon the need of the child and objectives of the topic and the subject. At least one project work should be conducted in an academic year in every subject to see the various areas of development of a child and at least one unit test of short duration should be organized per semester in each subject so that there is continuity in assessment and the child is regularly reading and understanding what he is learning. The summative evaluation which is conducted at the end of the instructional segment should be designed to determine the extent to which the instructional objective have been achieved. It is usually used for assigning course grades or certification. Summative assessment is carried out at the end of course of learning at it measures or sums up how much the student has learned from the course. It is usually a graded test and is marked according to the scale or set of grades. Example assigning marks or grade to a final exam. Forms of summative evaluation can be in a written or a oral or a practical form. It can be in the end of a semester or end of a year examination. It can be both oral practical examination which should be conducted by school jointly with help of other teachers. It is not the day to day teacher who is teaching the class should be part of the summative evaluation, but he should also be consulted with other members who are teaching the other classes and also the head of the school. Repeat, instructions for summative evaluation, it should be done in form of a written or a oral or a practical at the end of each term. Oral practical examination should be conducted at the class school level jointly by T. Uh, Repeat, challenges of CCE, the challenges in comprehensive continuous evaluation are the large class strength, if we have large number of people then to access all the areas becomes challenging for the people, the high pupil teacher ratio because again if we have to assess one student in a particular area it is easier or in one student in various diverse area it is easier to assess large number of teachers require more time and therefore more teachers should be there to assess the student in the diverse abilities. 
teachers' perception and competencies have also be to be enhanced to meet the challenges of CCE. Absentism, when teachers and pupil both are absent, then the continuous process of evaluation takes a setback. Since there are diverse learners, therefore the assessment patterns have also to be diverse for each learner and that is again a very big challenge of continuous comprehensive evaluation. And the biggest challenge is that the time limit which we have for each semester, for each year, which is again a setback for CCE. Regular monitoring and feedback to be given in a systematic order requires a lot of time and therefore CCE cannot be implemented if we do not have sufficient number of teachers. Remediation and enrichment material should be available for each type of problems which the student face and then only the continuous evaluation can give a proper feedback. The teaching learning resources are required for the continuous feedback to the students. There cannot be a uniform applicability of uh, CCE for all cases and therefore that is a big challenge in the CCE. Switching from CCE to traditional evaluation in higher classes again gives a lot of problems. Although CCE is preventing nepotism and victimization, but to implement it, it requires a lot of ability, efficiency on part of the teacher. Now, if we have to see comprehensive continuous evaluation in science, what are the aspects which have to be evaluated or which have to be assessed in science teaching learning? For this, we first should focus on what are the objectives of teaching science. As per the recommendation of NCRT and NCF 2005, the objectives of science teaching are as follows, participation of students in science activities, observation of science related events, designing and developing models, science, skill in planning and conducting quizzes, seminars on topics related to science and that can also be a project in science. Skills of doing experiments, skills of using acquired scientific knowledge in real life situation, enhancing interest in science and appreciation of nature, developing skills for problem solving with scientific outlook. This is beside the content knowledge of scientific facts, content and principles. So evaluation of science, if it has to be continuous and comprehensive, it should have two aspects. For example, the 40% part of it should be a formative assessment and 60% part of it can be a summative evaluation. The scheme given by CBSC states that, that formative evaluation can be again divided into three parts. It can be a activity based evaluation, it can be a test based evaluation and it can be a practical evaluation. This whole will consist of 40% marks. And the summative evaluation which will be at the end will consist of 60% marks. Formative assessment in science is an assessment that takes place during the course of learning science. Assessment for learning provides continuous feedback to the teachers and learners. It facilitates to identify the ways of attaining goals of science teaching. It helps the learner to find out the hurdles in learning and find remedial measures to rectify it and also helps the teacher to know whether he is proceeding in a systematic way. As already mentioned, the formative assessment can have practical activity, activity based assessment and test based assessment. Practical assessment can buy some experiment. Activity based assessment can be by some project or uh, by some pictures or by making some material and test based assessment is a written assessment in form of items which can be multiple choice types or filling in the blanks type or essay type.
Activity based assessment of formative assessment is a broad based measure of learners participation and involvement in learning activities. For example, in science it can be making a tour to a garden or it can be a visit to a scientific lab. It can be carried out on basis of involvement, interest and participation of learner and learning achievement. It can be a group or an individual activity. Since assessment is based on performance of the learner in activities, rote memorization is avoided and it leads to meaningful learning. This assessment is based on acquisition of scientific skills and designing appropriate activities to achieve these skills. This will enhance the scientific attitude, analytic skills, appropriate activities to achieve the skill of interest and skill of exploration in science. Learning through individual and group activities and peer self-learning enhances the capacity of an individual to work in a group. Criteria for designing these activities can depend upon the number of students in a class, the age of the students, the nature of the activity which has to be performed that is it, whether it is a group activity or an individual activity, duration and time of activity and looking for a local resource. Suppose we have to visit a garden for studying flowering plants then the best season should be spring. It should not be done in other seasons because at spring you have maximum number of flowers in a garden and their diversity can help the student to know about different type of flowers. Criteria of designing this activities is the relevance of activities to the concept. If we are teaching flowering plants, then we should take the students to a garden in spring. Low cost material, which is not very expensive because if the material is very expensive, then the students will not be free to experiment or use it freely. It should stimulate interest of the student, the activities which are being done and they should facilitate learning and it should be able to develop a particular scientific skill, may it be observation, may it be experimentation, may it be inference, whatever it is. The list of activity which can be there in the activity based assessment are experiments, concepts map, student worksheets, assessment designed for various purpose, projects, model preparation, role play, field trips that can be various activities related to various areas of science teaching learning. For example, if we have to study the diversity of animals, the best thing can be to plan a field trip of the students to a zoo or a zoological garden. Then it can also include reading of good books, having debates and discussion on science topics, drawing something new, using album or script book to collect material, presentation of a very good aspects or a very good topic of science, web searching, interpretations of the information collected and using a science dictionary. Steps for activity based assessments can be the time and nature of activities, the topic and content and the learning objectives. Now the purpose in CCE is also to integrate the course collecting aspects with science. To assist students to grasp the connection between the reality of academic knowledge and the life experience and to encourage them to use these skills. To enrich the curriculum without overloading is the way that the teaching of additional subjects of course scholastic skills can be done to facilitate connection across learning areas and values because these things a scientific attitude in a person should help him to analyze all the action that he takes in his life before coming to any particular conclusion. Example. While understanding the gender, caste and religion, students develop their empathetic and analytical skill. They develop positive attitude toward number of discriminated class. Also the value of brotherhood and spirit of unity is developed among students. If the course scholastic aspects like scientific attitude and valuing others are inculcated in the students. The various assessment activities can be planned out from time to time like it can be done on the basis of material which is required, the remedial measures that are to be taken, the learning outcomes that have to be planned. For the teacher, the teacher should organize activities using easily available low cost material and local materials. They should avoid 
thermocol models because thermocol is not very good for students it is also having uh, not it is not even biodegradable so it should not be used many times and we should encourage the learner to make the models themselves rather than using ready made purchase model the teacher should guide the learner to design these activities the projects the teacher should give should be simple and encouraging to the learner and the learner should bring the models or the designs by himself for formative assessments we can use various types of questions like multiple choice type of question filling in the blanks type of question matching questions very short answer or long answer types question and also drawing of diagram should be a part of formative assessment for students or written assessment for students the test whichever the teacher designs he should keep in mind that the test should be of short duration there should be variety of questions that is objective questions should also be there and subjective questions should be there and the questions should kindle interest in the students formative assessment the list of practicals can be there like for example it can be preparation of a slides it can be preparation of uh, uh, microorganisms it can be measuring of volume of liquid finding radius of a cylindrical objects for assessment of scientific experiments there should be at least large number of experiment for example in first term there should be seven science experiments students should do all the experiments following the guidelines given in the textbook and record the experiment neatly each experiment should have certain mark based assessment and that should be defined from before minimum four experiment should be assessed and reward of 40 should be given out of seven for summative evaluation the learning achievement of the learner should be done at the test at the end of the term summative assessment should be conducted on blueprint for 60 marks and of duration of 22 hours the blueprint should be developed based on subject disciplines like physics chemistry botany zoology it is a method to assess the acquisition of skills knowledge understanding application and skills at the end of a course or a term summative assessment must be carried out using questions the questions should be chosen from lessons which have been taught in that particular term the objective type short answer type paragraph question should all be there it should be asked in such a way that it kindles thinking skills of the students the allocation of various questions should be done on the basis of 20% for understanding 30% for application and 30% for skill so formative and summative evaluation should be the part of continuous comprehensive evaluation in science and all aspects of a learner should be measured that it is the content knowledge in science it is the various skills and activities which should be developed through science and this should be done from time to time not based on one day and by various sorts of activities which should be planned systematically by the teacher although this takes a lot of effort on the part of the teacher but that is the true assessment of scientific knowledge in a learner and if done systematically it will definitely let us know the various aspects of scientific outcomes which a learner has achieved during a particular course thank you